It's time for Baby and Toddler Instructions with host Blythe Lippman. Blythe is a nationally renowned infant and toddler expert who has over 30 years experience helping moms and dads regain their sanity, teaching them how to survive, and giving them the confidence they need to be the best parents ever. From sleeping to crying to potty training to choosing a preschool and so much more. If you're a parent, Baby and Toddler Instructions is the show you've been looking for. Now here's your host, Life Lipman. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever in the world you might be. Welcome to Baby and Toddler Instructions. Today is Wednesday, November 4th. The show is live. And if you have any questions, comments, I love callers. Don't be shy, Maureen, if you're listening. Call 877-864-4869. I had to say that. My friend Maureen always used to call, but now she's shy. Anyway, love Maureen. Um, but if you are listening to a podcast, which are available 24-7, you can always contact me via my website, mybestparentingadvice.com. And also, if you go to radio and it will say podcast, you will see all of my 200-plus shows. I've had that many guests. And you can you can pull them up on mybestparentingadvice.com, toginet.com, stitcher.com, and iTunes. Make sure you go to podcast. And they're always there. I've had such great guests, and I will continue to have wonderful guests. Hope you all had a fun Halloween and you're not still in a sugar coma. But I wanted to tell you there's something called Operation Gratitude. If you want to donate your candy, um, Operation Gratitude will send it to the troops, but you need to get it there no later than November 15th. And what a treat for them. You know, it's they're not with their families. Have, have some candy. Anyway, that's Operation Gratitude. Also, I hope you enjoyed last week's show. If you had a chance to listen, it was a blast from the past. It was my birthday week, and if you listen, you know I love my birthday. So I thought it would be really fun to pull up the show from last year because I know I had some people call in and sing, and it was really funny. The podcast is also up 24-7 on Stitcher, iTunes, TogiNet, and MyBestParentingAdvice.com. I am very excited about today's show. It's going to be a little different. I have two guests today. Can you believe it's already November? And that means the wonderful Connie Grunning from peanutbutterandwine.com, W-H-I-N-E, is going to tell us what's hot and what's not in November. And I can't wait to talk to her because the holidays are going to be here before we know. I mean, the Christmas decorations are already out in the stores. Seriously, come on, we haven't had turkey yet. Why don't they just leave them out all year? Okay, I sound like a humbug. Anyway, I think it's a little early to start putting Christmas trees out. Um, also, my second guest is going to be very special. Her name is Lisa Rachel Horlander, and she is the producer of this show every week. And we are going to talk all about motherhood because she's a mom. And we're also going to talk a little bit about what it takes to produce a show because many times my guests will say, gosh, I'd love to have a radio show. And I couldn't do this without her and all the other wonderful people at toginet.com. We have some great shows. So take a look and look at all the shows. And you know what? Maybe you'll meet Lisa or Eric or Scott or Roy or who am I forgetting? Karina. Anyway, love doing my show. I love Wednesdays. But without further ado, let me say good morning to Connie Grunning from Peanut Butter and Wine, W-H-I-N-E. And, you know, Connie, I am looking at your bio and I'm looking at all the things that you're posting your, and everything, your top 1,000 Amazon reviewer, Google pages, Twitter, <laughs> Pinterest, Instagram. You're on. Share what you want. I'm Tell here. everybody how good wonderful morning. you are. <laughs> Tell everybody what you I know you, you do. don't like to have Christmas decorations out so early, but the whole month of November, we have so many good Christmas giveaways coming. So, you have to be sure and enter because I joined up with a whole bunch of other bloggers, and we will have all sorts of Christmas things. So it's like winning your some of your Christmas gifts. So that would okay. be a good thing. But I didn't so, say gifts. I was talking decorations, and by the time you get them, it will be Thanksgiving, so then we're good. That's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> so I do have some really good things. I have a huge baby product giveaway. All of these were the Green Mom uh, top picks of the year. 
they have some really, really cute things. And one of the things is this coat. So if you click, if you go on to peanut butter and wine, like wine, um, dot com, and on the left, on the right hand side, it, you just go down a little ways, it'll say PB and wine giveaways. And the first one, the first little square is huge baby product giveaways. You have to scroll down to see this coat. This is the most brilliant thing for moms. It's a coat that includes the baby. So you can wear the baby in the little backpack or the little carriers, and it covers the baby, too. So the baby's this is little awesome. legs are warm. This is awesome. I'm looking at it right now. This is the coolest thing. I'm going to have to get them on my show. Isn't that? That is the cutest coat, for one. I mean, I would wear that coat and grab a baby to wear that coat. That's so oh, cute. Oh, yeah. Isn't it just this is, is this is, Where was that when I had my baby? Oh, when, no <laughs> kidding. If you're listening, go to peanut butter and wine, com and take a look at this coat. This is really awesome. I just, I'm, I'm still blown away by the coat. The coat is my favorite thing on here today. <laughs> um, the next thing I have, I have another one, um, the Santa inflatable. There are other things with this giveaway, but the Santa's inflatable is Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse in their little hot cocoa. Um, it's an inflatable, but it's a little hot cocoa booth, but in a, a six foot inflatable for your front yard. Oh, how cute, cute would that be for December? That'd be so cute. And then I also have my, my own personal thank you for being a follower. I give $50 away every month, and it's however you want your $50. Do you want it an Amazon gift card, you want an iTunes, or you want me to send you PayPal? A little help to, for Christmas shopping or for Thanksgiving dinner. And then I also have the Amazon Blast, which I'm doing for the entire month of November. It's every week there's another $100 Amazon gift card. And I have tons more giveaways coming this month, so be sure and, and check in for those. Then on another, uh, for toys, if you're looking for toys, I put, uh, thanks to Blythe, I put my what you're looking for button. It's number two on the right-hand side, and you can type in uh, listen and play Zoo Bingo. It's from Learning Journey, and this is a great game to teach kids to hear sound. Now, Personally, I can't tell the difference between the um, the hyena and the uh, I'm trying to think of what the other one was. Um, but there's two sounds that sound way too close for me. But Alice knows who who they are, so analysis four, and she's the expert. So isn't that funny? Um, you know, I remember I remember teaching in the two year old room, and I could never do the puzzles. And I'd give it to a two year old, and they go, "Here, this is how you do it." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Really, kid? What? <laughs> um, the other one that is really, really a cool thing is the, um, it's a light up. It's called, put in, type in night stars. And this is a, um, a, a landscape lighting. It comes in a, it's a little tiny, it looks like a little spotlight. And it has a yard stake, but you can also use, take the yard stake off and use it in the house. And it has 12 different slides, so you can put up um, birthday balloons. You can put up fall leaves. I have a little video that kind of shows you what all the little uh, screens are, and it make, lights up the whole room with, uh, you know, uh, hearts for Valentine's Day or bats and, and witches for Halloween. It's so cool. I can't wait for my Elf on the Shelf uh, breakfast. Every year we have... Um, my three grandkids come over, and I wrap up my hair, and I put mascara under my eyes, <laughs> and they knock on the door, and I say, "What? Why are you here? It's like morning, and I sleep in today." And they say, "Because we got a note that said, come to Nana's right now." And then I have little footprints that I put, but my elf came, and then the kitchen, and the, the kitchen is a mess. The elf is a very messy pancake maker, so there's always flour everywhere. And then the table is decorated in Elf on the Shelf. There's the book as out, and the elf is sitting there, and then there's breakfast, and there's toys, and there's a craft. And then it, it says that um, when it's time to go, and they look at the door as they're leaving, it says, I told all your elves to go to your house. So then they go home, and their elves are hiding in their home. 
So for the elf on the shelf, I will have um, my stars, my um, snowflakes all out or my reindeer, probably the reindeer. So where's the picture of elf on the shelf with mascara under her eyes? I'm looking on your site right now. I don't see it. <laughs> oh, that's true. I need to do that this year. You need a picture. <laughs> yes, we want to see a picture <laughs> of elf on the shelf. Oh, it's so much fun to do the elf on the shelf. And then every day, of course, I, I cheat because I don't have kids at my house. I use last year's pictures to show where he is or where he was, you know, from last year. But we don't tell them it was from last year. Oh, look, at where Nana found the elf today. What fun. You know what I love on your site, too? I'm looking at this this teether crib rail. You know how babies always stand up and teeth on the crib rail. And once they get teeth, if you have a wooden crib, oh, my goodness, there's little teeth marks. Yep, yep. So I'm, I'm telling looking you, at that this. baby product giveaway is amazing. The And you get everything. It's only one winner for all of this. So you will get all of that, the little, uh, the little baby donut thing and the little uh, diaper covers. Oh, just so many cute, cute things in there. It's like the Ellen giveaway. It's the Connie giveaway. I know. Woohoo! Oh, look at this. I'm Ellen the second. <laughs> yes. You know, I do have to say, it's so nice to see people giving things away and entering and, and doing all this because, you know, I, I, I mean, this is my opinion, but I think it all started with Oprah when she gave away the cars. And it seems like everybody's followed, but there we all want a special gift or something that's a surprise. And exactly. Anyway, so I can't wait to talk to you in December. We are coming okay, up and, to the break. Okay. Can I tell you really quick, when you're on my site, go down to where my Instagram is and okay. hear my granddaughter, Alice, do her joke for the day. Oh, I, I have to see if I can put this on my site because I loved your joke when you were on last month. Or get her to come <laughs> tell it again on December. Anyway, thank I you will. so much for being on this bye show bye. again. Talk to you in December. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Yay. You too. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. I love having Connie on. You know, go to Peanut Butter and Wine, W-H-I-N-E. She's got the greatest giveaways, and she's so much fun, and you'll love looking at her site. It just makes you happy. Connie is somebody that believes in being positive like we all should every day. So we are going to have a commercial break. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with more help. My baby came without instructions. It's baby and toddler instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. Have you heard? The pages of American Patchwork and Quilting magazine come to life on our new weekly online radio show, American Patchwork and Quilting. Join Pat Sloan, our blogging and quilt designer host, as she talks about the latest trends, ideas, and inspirations. Her guests include quilt pattern designers, authors, quilt shop owners, and our editors. All quilters, just like you. Call in with your questions. Get quilting tips from industry experts. Learn about free patterns. Hear behind-the-scenes stories from our magazines, American Patchwork and Quilting, Quilt Sampler, and Quilts and More. Get the scoop on free stuff and find out more about the best independent quilt shops in North America. To listen to a live show, tune in Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just log on to allpeoplequilt.com slash radio. To hear past shows, go to iTunes and search for American Patchwork and Quilting Radio. We hope you'll join us because we know that quilting changes everything. It's words you never heard. Harvey McKay, author of the best-selling book, Use Your Head to Get Your Foot in the Door, includes job search secrets no one else will tell you. Harvey is a true ideal praxist. That's a person who puts ideas into practice. Harvey admits landing the right job can be more difficult than the job itself. And successful people can't have pornophobia. That's the fear of work. But in these economic times, it can be a necessity to make money any way you can. What's a word for using any means to make money? Womo de Kunquais. So what's the best job to have? Will Rogers once said, the best job in the country is the vice president. All he has to do is get up every day and ask, how is the president? It's 
I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my new app, Too Funny for Words. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet, the hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lipman. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. I am so excited about today's show. We have so many good things going on like we always do, but a couple things that aren't so good, but they will help you. I have a lot of recalls today, so I'm going to quickly go through them, and I will put them on mybestparentingadvice.com and babyinstructions.com. I was having a little issue with WordPress this morning, so when it does work again, ah, technology, I will put these on. First of all, the Window Shades by Carrot Imports. The cellular roller and soft horizontal shade strangulation can occur when shades continuous loop pull cord or head chain is attached to the wall and it can go around a child's neck. Well, duh. You know what? If you have any kind of window shades that have cords hanging, make sure they're very short or even put a little nail up and hook them up high where your child cannot reach them because that's always a hazard. Also, the Maley Rose recalled the pink girls' hoodies that they have a drawstring inside the lining of the hood that can also cause a strangulation hazard. Again, a lot of sweatshirts, especially this time of year, it's getting cold. If they have a drawstring, I always say put a couple knots in it so your children cannot pull them too tight and, God forbid, get them around their neck. So that's Maley Rose. The Pottery Barn Kids recalled the Avengers and Darth Vader water bottles. The gray paint on the metal portion of the bottle can, can contain excessive levels of lead. We have to get rid of this lead business. Anyway, that's the Pottery Barn's Avengers and Darth Vader water bottles. Don't let your kids use them. Take them back to the store or call them. Um, the Burley Design recalled child bicycle trailers. This is when a parent attaches the trailer to their bike and they pull their child. It says the black plastic tow bar receiver can separate from the tow bar when they, when they appear to be connected, posing a crash hazard. Yikes. Uh, that's not a good one. None of them are. Um, the La Rose Industries Peanuts Flying Ace Ride-On Toys, the toys blue hubcaps. This is the Peanuts oh, Flying Ace Ride-On Toy. The blue hubcaps can detach from the wheel, posing a choking hazard to young children. The Build-A-Bear recalled the dragon-stuffed animal. The satin seam of the, an seam of the animal can open, allowing the stuffing to be exposed. Another choking hazard. And last but not least, the Golden Horse Children's Denim Nursery Rhyme Five Pocket. Denim pants, the zipper pull can detach, and it will go in the mouth. Anyway, so many of these, you know, I'm so happy they do post them because if you have any of this, you do not want to use them, and I say it every week, you do not want to try to fix them yourself because that's why we have the numbers. The companies, you know, the companies are really good about taking care of things, or you can even take them back to the store because most of the stores, um, the baby stores, the children's stores, I was in Babies R Us last week, and one of the girls said to me, you know, we always get recall notices every day, and the companies contact us. So, again, you can always take it back to the store, so... I will put those on my site, My Best Parenting Advice and Baby Instructions. Also, you can always go to cpsc.gov and look up the latest recalls. Um, what else? Let's see what else I have. Oh, I want to share a story with you before I welcome my second guest, Lisa. I work in an infant room, and I have 12 adorable, cute babies, most under the age of one. However, there are a few of these babes that have just turned one and they're starting to take steps and they're feeling their oats. They're feeling really independent and sometimes they're trying to bite. So I thought I would share a couple things from my book, Help! My Toddler Came Without Instructions from Ouch! That Hurt! My chapter on toddlers and aggressive behaviors. If you have a biter, check and see, this sounds silly, but it's not. See if they bite the same time, you know, if they're in preschool. And then look at what they're doing then. Are they hungry? Are they tired? Are they cutting a tooth? You know, have they had not a good night's sleep? You know, a lot of, a lot of times they just bite because they're frustrated. Maybe they can't use their words so well and they want a toy. I see this. They want a toy and the other baby, the other toddler takes the toy and then they bite them. 
So go down the list and check and see. And if the teacher says, you know, I always see this happen around nine o'clock, right before snack, then maybe, you're, maybe your uh, child didn't have enough to eat for breakfast and they're hungry. You know, we get kind of grumpy when we're hungry, all of us. Um, also, if they bite, give your toddler something they can bite. If they're old enough to eat a frozen banana or a juice pop or even a frozen bagel, if they're teething, that will make their gums feel better. If they're not, it helps them just to bite on something. Um, if your toddler tries to bite a friend, don't, don't jump in and, and raise your voice and scare them. You know what? Bend down to their level and tell your child to say, I'm sorry, and show them the other toddler and say, that hurts. Also, what else? If they bite, make sure they're not frustrated with what they're doing. One of the great things you can always do is to change what they're doing. You know what? If they're, if they're playing with something and the kids are fighting over it, take them to another activity. If it's a little boy, boys love to run and jump. If you can take them outside, do that. You know what? They like to do things that wheel. Again, just a couple of tips if they bite. And most of the time when these guys are little, they don't realize they're going to hurt the other baby. They're going to hurt the other toddler. And I also saw in my room this week one of the one of the little ones. I thought she was going to bite the baby, one of our babies that were younger, but she really wasn't biting. She was trying to give him a kiss. So pay attention to what they're doing. If it is biting, you can get my book, Help My Toddler Came Without Instructions, on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, through my website. And if you want an Audible version, go to audible.com forward slash parents, and you can get a free downloadable book, and I will get credit for it. Yay! And you can listen to all my great tips on everything from toddlers gone wild to being the best grandparents to date night. I have so many things in, in my book, hundreds of tips that can help when you're a parent. Anyway, so without further ado, let me tell you a little bit about my next guest, she is my wonderful radio producer. Her name is Lisa Rachel Orlander, and we are going to talk about all kinds of things, being moms, radio. Anyway, Lisa lives in Tyler, Texas. She's a radio show producer, an interviewer's assistant at TogiNet, an artist at a self-employed and loving it site. And Lisa, welcome to the show. I'm so happy that you can produce the show and be my guest. Thank you. Oh, that was such a nice introduction. Thank you. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> so what is artists, what is artists a self-employed and loving it, a self-employed and loving it, sorry. I think that's Facebook's way of saying I'm a um, freelance artist. Are you a freelance artist drawing? I, I can do more. everything, actually. I'm, I'm back, actually back in college to become a professor for fine art. Um, Ooh. So I focus on painting, but I have done uh, logos. I have painted on Tom's shoes. I have, you name it, I've tried it. I try to do it. I think I have a few doodles off to the side right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. You know, I Tom, I love Tom's shoes. You have people hired you to like paint things on their shoes. Oh, long story. I had an Etsy shop that was very successful, and I actually painted over five hundred pairs of shoes in three years. Um, sent them wow. all over the world. So I I did everything from the a girl's sister and her little dog to running to elephants. I had very popular elephant giraffes and dream catcher shoe designs. Um, so yeah, awesome. I'm size six. I wish I six. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have your shop? <laughs> I, it is actually. I have an Etsy shop still. It's uh, um, Lisa Rachel um, dot Etsy dot com, and I don't have any of the shoes up for sale, but I can take commissions. <laughs> I'm going to look that up when we get off the show. What fun! Little known facts. <laughs> yes. Okay. And the radio show producer. How did you ever want to be in radio? Uh. Actually, it never dawned on me. I stumbled upon this um, through some connections. I got the the gig with um, our author shows, putting those together. Um, and then the opening came up for producing shows. And, of course, I've been watching over everyone's shoulders. So I picked it up and uh, a few months later just started diving into it. So I've, I've, it's nice to be able to do both. And um, I kind of feel like I, I like wearing many hats around here. It's really fun. You know what? I 
I'm not saying this because I say it to all the guests, and when I do say it, I mean it. You should have your own show because oh. <laughs> you've got a great radio voice. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> really, it runs in the family, I think. Oh, that's good to know. Maybe I've picked up from listening to so many people. Yeah. You know, you do this. Okay. I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this question, but because I know your mom, I know your working mom, but let me ask you something about radio first. Because you produce a lot of shows, is there one issue that, that hosts have? Are they nervous? Or is there one thing that always comes up that's common? Among uh, hosts, I'm really curious. That's an interesting question. Um, I actually noticed most people don't have very many nerves, um, and if they do, they're hiding it very well. <laughs> um, what I think the biggest is maybe they overtax themselves. I get the picture that sometimes um, there's a lot of things going on in their day, and, um, and this is one of them. But you know, that's just all of us that are working. I think is it's balancing out what we're doing, um, paying attention to how much time we have for ourselves. So um, I think that might be the one thing I've noticed is I kind of pick up on a little anxiety um, off the off the air. <laughs> you know what? And that's interesting that you said that. And that's such a great tip too, because as parents, since this is baby and toddler instructions, our children can pick up on the fact that we're stressed and we have 10 million things to do. And what are we going to do next? The next activity. And what happens is that we don't really enjoy what we're doing at the moment. We're not fully present. You know what? We're present, but we're 25 other places because we have to hurry up and go and Anyway, I'm glad you said that because it's for everybody, not just for radio hosts. I mean, we all have so many things to do. And the older I get, the more I say, stop and breathe, Blythe. Where are you? What are you doing? I love Wednesdays. And when I am on my show, I'm on my show because I just love doing it. And I love talking to my guests. So from Lisa's tip and my tip, be fully present, whatever you're doing. You know what? Whatever you have to do next will still be there. So on that note, we are going to go to a commercial break in just a few seconds. And when we come back, I have lots of questions for Lisa. And if you want to say good morning, call us at 877-864-4869. I love callers. You can talk about being a parent. You can talk about radio. You can just say good morning. So here comes the music, and we will be right back. Please stay with us. We'll be right back with more help. For help, my baby came without instructions. It's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. This is God in Country, the collision of faith and politics, hosted by nationally known speaker, Reverend Dr. Sean Michael Greener. Not your typical Rev. Dr. Sean is a proud military veteran, former law enforcement officer, and founder of the internationally regarded Executive Protection Team. Dr. Sean holds a bachelor's degree in biblical counseling and master's and doctorate degrees in theology and is currently pursuing a doctorate in ministry with a Hebrew worldview focus. Through his counseling, elite life coaching, and national speaking, this ninja pastor tells it like it is. This series is biblically and politically engaged with the pedal to the metal. Join host and author of the acclaimed yet controversial book, Excellence Killed the Church, How Mediocrity is Destroying America, Dr. Sean Michael Greener, every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on this radio network. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert, Annette Hammond. A study from the Center of Science in the Public Interest reviewed the nutritional contents of movie theater popcorn and found an alarming amount of fat, salt, and calories. A typical large tub of popcorn has 1,200 calories, 980 milligrams of sodium, and 60 grams of saturated fat. Adding just one tablespoon of butter adds 130 calories. 
Even the small delivers 670 calories, 550 milligrams of sodium, and 24 grams of saturated fat. Movie theater popcorn is often popped in coconut oil, which is about 90% saturated fat. Add salt to the enormous portions, and your once healthy snack turns into a health offender. Next time you go to the movies, bring your own air-popped popcorn and enjoy the show. For the Fitness Minute, I'm Annette Hammond, keeping you healthy, happy, and fit. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet, the hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lipman. Well, welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. I am so happy you could tune in today or if you're listening to a podcast. Thanks for listening. I have a wonderful guest. She is my radio producer, lives in Tyler, Texas. She's a wonderful freelance artist, which I didn't know. So I don't know. Maybe I should say don't order shoes, but she used to paint on shoes. I would love to see them. Her name is Lisa Rachel Orlander, and we are, have so many things to talk about. We were talking about doing a radio show before the break. Um, Lisa, I know that you're also a mom. Yes. Is it hard to juggle being a working mom? Well, of course it has its its struggles, and of course the regret, regrets are what get me in the end. I battle not feeling guilty that I don't get to go to his classes and be that house mom kind of a thing. My, actually, I'm really blessed that my mom... And um, my mother-in-law and my husband will try to go and volunteer up at our school. So um, I, I get to have lunch with them once in a while, and I treasure those moments and try to remind myself of positive things and um, not let myself dwell on regrets because they will just bog me down. And then I can't give him positive. You know, and it's awful because we women have that G world word. We're built, I think we're born with guilt. I'm not kidding. Oh, it's so true. We always look at it, you know, we worry, are we doing the right job and what's going to happen? And again, to what we said before the break, be fully present. You know what? Mm -hmm. None of this comes with instructions. I don't know why we have to get a driver's license. We don't have to get a parent license, (laughs) which is why I've written my books. And for those listeners that don't know about my books, Help My Baby Came Without Instructions, More Help My Baby Came Without Instructions, and Help My Toddler Came Without Instructions, the reason that I wrote my books is because there weren't the common sense things and not because anybody mm. there's anything wrong and you don't know what you're doing. You just never have never done it before. So I, you know, I took lots of things from parents and I got lots of tips and things that work for them and also many things that I did with my own children and in my, you know, in my daycare rooms and setting up preschool rooms. And I wanted to make easy books for parents to figure out what to do when your baby's screaming, what do you do? Or for instance, I was talking about biting. If your toddler bites you, do you bite him back? <laughs> do you give him an apple? You know, if your baby won't sleep at night, just things like warming up a receiving blanket in the dryer and swaddling your baby in it when they're having mm-hmm. a little cranky day. You know, things I didn't know. Lisa, I didn't know either. When I had, when I had my daughter, Lindsay, she had days and nights mixed up and <laughs> Uh, my mother bought me Dr. Spock, which kind of shows my age. Um, and I didn't know. I And I had taken care of babies since I was 11. So parents out me there, too. moms especially, get rid of that G word. There's no guilt. Well, and that's so interesting because I, I was so young when I, I, at the time I didn't think I was young, but I look back, I'm like, I was so young when I first had Asher and um, when I first got married and I was still in college and um I didn't have a clue, but I had been babysitting for years. So I think the intuition of, of all those years of good parenting from my own parents and then good parenting from babysitting, and I tried the best I could. And I just remember thinking, you know, I'm probably going to mess up somewhere, but I'm going to do the best I can and just own it. <laughs> good for you. I haven't looked back. He sounds like a great little boy. Cause I don't know, how old is he? He's eight? I don't know how he is. He's almost nine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Doesn't it go quickly? Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. It's, I can't believe it. I say that to parents all the time. I mean, I look at my grandson. He's almost six months old, and it's like, wait, where did the time go? Anyway, so 
how do you organize yourself for the week since you're a working mom? Do you cook ahead or do you do the laundry every day? Or I'm always curious. Actually, it's um, a fine-tuned wheel that I had to keep changing up, um, especially since I am I'm back in college and my husband is as well. And so it's it, every semester is a new system. Um, when I first got married, um, I discovered it's flydlady.com um, has a whole bunch of housekeeping tips. So I, t- from that, I started discovering a way of, um, I have a, uh, what's it called? A day planner. Um, it is I color coordinated. That. It has little sticky things. And I mean, it is a well oiled machine of, um, information. So I keep that with me in my purse. And, um, if it's not written down, I can, t- I tell people right up front when I schedule things, if I don't write it down right now, you're going to have to remind me. <laughs> so that's at, at between that and um, I also uh, we have it well distributed with chores um, Asher does many chores he has when he comes home he has his um, their little chores like take the laundry out of the dryer put it on our bed um, then we fold it later or um, pick up all the shoes and cl- dirty clothes put them in their spots um, and sweep the kitchen so there's not a lot it's small and then he can do his homework and then he he gets an hour of whatever screen thing he wants to do so that helps huge I mean oh my gosh I don't know how people with who kids don't do chores survive um, Ben does chores I do chores and it's it's more like I'll, I'll put the laundry in the, the washing machine, um, put soap and start it. Ben will come and fold after Asher has put it on the bed. You know, so ben it's dad. the steps. Ben is daddy, right? Oh, yeah. Ben is dad. Asher is our kid. Okay. So it, it's just teamwork. I don't know. I don't cooking? know how to do it without. You um, cook? We take turns. And I, I do a lot of prep work on the weekend. My husband can't have any gluten, so that everything is pretty much made from scratch. But I, I uh, hit up our local farmer's market. It's like my treasured part of the week. Um, I get all my goodies, and I plan out the menu with Ben. Um, we'll sit down as a family, actually, and usually, I'll, what do you all want? Who wants to make what? No, seriously, you got to give me advice. What do you want to eat? <laughs> I'm not doing making it up. <laughs> um it doesn't always work. We kind of make things up as we go sometimes during the week. But if I have soup made in containers, I can take that for lunch as leftovers, or we can just heat it up as a last-minute meal. So it it's um, it changes, like I said, each semester. But it usually, um, it, that's the general gist of how we can make this world happen. You know, it's so important, too, because I think back when my kids were little, and I used to do the same thing. I used to go to the grocery store once a week. I went on Sundays. And I wrote everything down that we were going to have. So we didn't have all the farmer's markets then, which I love. I'm so happy to hear that you're a farmer's market shopper because I am too. And it's funny because my, my son and I were having this discussion about meals. And he was telling me how his friends that have a baby, on Sunday they make everything for the week. Everything. And they put it in Tupperwares and they put it in the freezer and... You know what? I'm I'm bad. I like things fresh, and I could never, like, make chicken on Sunday and eat it on Wednesday because I'm a food snob, and it wouldn't taste right to me. So, <laughs> anyway, um, I think that organization is the name of the game. And when I see parents sometimes that go to the grocery store every night, you know what? Sit down and think about it again. And what is it called, flylady.com, Lisa? Oh, yeah, I, I love that. Her. That's it's great. It's still around. and um... I remember that from years ago. But you know what? Oh, yeah. Sit down and figure out what works for you. If you only have to go to the grocery store once a week and it doesn't have to be with the children, or if you have a young baby, you know, don't pick a time when he or she is cranky and you have everything planned for the week, my gosh, to come home from work and not have to say, okay, what are we having for dinner? I don't have any milk. I don't have any eggs. Anyway, that worked for me, too. Oh, it's so helpful. Well, and we save a ton of money on this. And I actually, I save money from buying things at the farmer's market. Um, usually people think, oh, it's more expensive. And, and yeah, maybe this um, thing of car- organic carrots cost more than the ones at the store. But um, it fills you up more. It goes farther if you you just prep it all. And so I'll chop all of them up, put some into the fridge, some into the freezer. And it's taken me a while to figure out the system but we we spend so much less because we buy so much in the farmer's market and then we eat a lot of healthy things and we get filled up. It, it's so that's been one of those, especially since we're college students, we kind of, we've got to kind of watch things. But, you know, oh yeah, it's, it, it makes 
life so much easier to have it all planned out and then you don't have to scram at the last minute. It's like, oh my gosh, what are we making tonight? Let's do spaghetti again. Oh my goodness, we don't have any gluten-free noodles. Okay. Uh, rice and beans it is. No. You know, that it does make it easier. Um, I have a question from a person that just emailed me. Did Asher have chores at four years old? Oh, yeah. I started that kid off at like two. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do it for? We have um, what we used to. I wish we still have it. It broke. It was a, like a vacuum that was on a stick, a swivel sweeper, and it was just automatic. So I'd be, give it to him. I'm like, oh, can you help me clean? And then he'd come around and anything that was on the floor, he'd vacuum it up with this. It's like a little mini one. And I've been saying for years, someone needs to invent a child-sized vacuum that looks like a vacuum toy because... Oh my goodness, he was obsessed with his vacuum toy and he just wanted to use it always. And I was like, I wish that thing vacuumed. <laughs> but, you know, because they love to help. Toddlers oh, love to help. But even a two year old, I mean, I've taken care of many two year olds and something as simple as, as letting them put laundry in the dryer. Oh, if the dryer yes. is the low one, yes, it may take five minutes longer, 10 minutes longer, or letting them take it out. You know, it may take a little longer. Of course, we can do it easier. And quicker because we have bigger hands and we're older. But to start your little one out and tell them what a great job they do. Mm -hmm. I know even in my baby room, the one-year-olds, it's so cute. The just one-year-olds love to wipe things off. And I will always give them like a clean washcloth. And they will go around my infant room oh. and wipe off the toys. And the, they even do the floor. That's smart. They don't know, but they love to help. Well, and if you can, I remember when he was little, I was like, I don't want to miss out on this enthusiasm because he's going to get older, like his age now, and he's going to realize he wants, he has time to play and it's no longer fun to, there is no longer play to clean. And so he, when he, they want to spend time with you cleaning, I, I don't scold them and tell them they did a bad job ever. Just keep going back behind them when they're not looking and let them do it. It's so fun. Yeah, don't correct them. If you get if you ask them to do something, don't go, well you should do it like this. They're not your husband or partner. <laughs> you know what? That's so true. If you ask somebody, this is a great rule of thumb. If you ask somebody to help you, don't go tell them they're doing it wrong. I know people that have done that to me, and it's like, well, look, don't ask me. Do it yourself. Yeah. Well, especially, <laughs> I mean, if that I think it does applies to everyone. I've, I've noticed I don't want my husband to tell me that I did it different because then it'll, it'll be like, well, I did it this way. Oh, but good advice. No, it's true. And we all do things different. It's okay. You know what? Mm -hmm. I always say, if somebody's going to help me, then I don't have to do it. And okay, so it's not exactly the way I do it. Big deal. That's why they make chocolate and vanilla. And exactly. <laughs> well, we're going to go for another commercial break, and you still have time to call us at 877-864-4869. And if you have a question, you can always email it to me or go to the chat line on toginet.com. And we're talking to Lisa, my producer, the artist. She lives in Tyler, Texas. She's an interviewer assistant. She does so many things, and she's a mom. So we're talking about how she's organized her life, having a child and having all these many jobs. So when we come back, I'm going to ask Lisa what her favorite parenting tip is. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more help. My baby came without instructions. It's baby and toddler instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. In today's business world, a helping hand or idea that doesn't come with an invoice is a treasured find. And if that happens to you, then you need to pay it forward to keep other entrepreneurs from making mistakes or getting a raw deal. It's called Paying It Forward with Josephine Girasi. Wednesday mornings at 10, 9 a.m. Central. Josephine is going to have the guests describe their accomplishments, the lessons they've learned, both good and bad, and then sharing those pieces of knowledge as we create a movement of Paying It Forward. For more information about Josephine, her business, and background, you can go to MyMomKnowsBest.com. Josephine Girasi has always been a problem solver. She saw this need and has turned it into a movement. It's Paying It Forward. With tips, tools, and advice, and hard lessons learned, these pieces of knowledge can make a huge difference for you, your business, and others. So join us for Paying It Forward with Josephine Girasi, Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., 9 a.m. Central, on toginet.com. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert, Annette Hammond. We live in an instant society, and we don't like to wait for anything. 
When it comes to weight loss, we want that extra weight off now. Even though the temptation is there to try a crash diet, it is not the best choice. You need to lose weight gradually, not instantly. When you cut your calories back too much, you will feel fatigued and have very low energy. Harvard Medical School recommends that women do not go below 1,200 calories a day, and men do not go below 1,500 calories per day. A sensible goal is to try to lose a half a pound to a pound a week. Don't skimp on essential nutrients that your body needs. Losing weight does not have to be a dreaded event. It should be positive and will give you extra energy when it's done right. For the Fitness Minute, I'm Annette Hammond. Visit our Facebook fan page at Fitness Minute with Annette Hammond. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginap. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lipman. Well, welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. I am here with my wonderful guest, Lisa Rachel Horlander, and she is my radio producer every week, yay, and does so many other things. And before the break, I said that I was going to ask her for her favorite parenting tip because she's also a mom to Asher, but I want to share something, a few things with you first. Every week when I have my wonderful guests on, I always ask them for their favorite parenting tips. So I want to share a couple that I think are just great. Um, one of my guests said, trust yourself and know that you're a good mom. And that was from Kelly McConnell from Prince Lionheart. And the show was on 916. Debbie um, Popiel, who is a preschool director, said, be consistent and organized. Yay, Lisa, we go on that one. And that was Yay. on September. And let's see, who else do we have here? Well, I have a dad. Richard Rende said, know your kid and embrace it. Every child's different. And, boy, isn't that a true tip? You know, everybody's different. So know who your child is and embrace it. And don't try to change them. Mm. Also, Kristen Connor from Cure Childhood Cancer, her favorite parenting tip was, moms, let go of the guilt. Boy, aren't we all on the same page, Lisa? <laughs> and finally, when I was talking to Connie Grunning, who was just on from Peanut Butter and Wine, I love this. She says you look with your eyes and not with your hands. And she always says when you, when siblings fight, you should give 10 kisses and 30 second hugs. So Lisa, what is your favorite parenting tip? Well, before I give mine, I think that's interesting is look with your eyes, uh, not with your hands. My mother always told us that she wasn't afraid to take us into um, any type of uh, store or whatnot, but she's like, now you need, they don't know to trust you, um, but you know to keep your, look with your eyes, not with your hands. And so we, we get to go to all kinds of antique things and art shows and stuff. It was great. What a great mother. But, oh, oh yes. She was lots of fun or is lots of fun. She's a great grandmother now, but good advice that I have. Um, I think the best advice that I was given was, um, a mentor and a Bible study leader we had, um, when we were first married, um, and they had, the advice was um, you, the first eight years of a kid's life, usually mainly the, the first five are um, the, if you can teach them discipline, then the next eight will be about um, teaching them how to coach them through life. And then you'll get to be friends. But don't try to be friends before then because then you'll spend all of the rest of your life trying to catch up. So that's one thing we've focused. And, and sure enough, now that Asher's older, we're starting to just coach. We don't have to discipline as much anymore. And it's so, so nice to be able to be like, oh, I don't have to keep that straight face and, and get on to him. But hold on just a minute. We have some ringers on here. Let me really? answer some wow. calls. Hold okay. on. So you take it off to answer these calls. Okay, well, those are some great tips. You know, I love that. And I hadn't heard, you know, I hadn't heard some of them, but we're on the same page about guilt. Anyway, I think we have a caller. Oh, Lindsay's calling. Yay. Is Lindsay on there? Yes. I am hey, here. Lindsay. Yay, Lindsay's Hello, calling. Lindsay. And what do you want to share? Because Lindsay's my daughter. Yay. <laughs> How fabulous. <laughs> um, I think, you know, as you're talking about great advice for everyone, I think in this society of everything on the Internet and all the things you shouldn't do with your kids and everything that kills kids these days, 
um, a lot of us lived through all of these things that apparently kill babies these days. <laughs> um, I think I think the greatest advice that I have is to take everything with a grain of salt. You know, I, I look at the things about, like, watching TV with kids and, you know, how until they're two years old, you shouldn't let them watch TV. You shouldn't have anything on in the background. And to me, they make really good educational baby mm-hmm. shows and baby apps with the songs and things like that. And as long as you're not leaving them sit there all day um, and not doing other things with them, there's a good balance. But I think that it's, it's all about taking it with a grain of salt, to not get scared at everything that you read on the Internet and do what works for you and just cherish every single second you do have with your kid and not feel guilty about the times you have to be away. That's so true. I, That's great, Lindsay. I, I personally, I think it's helped my son learn so much. Actually. I learned a little from my mom, too. So. I bet you did. She's, <laughs> Take she, advice she, from the good advice. resources that you have in your life. So does that come in the in the realm of be careful if you fall you'll break your neck? You never actually broke your neck. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that part. But Lindsay, that's great advice. I'm glad you said that because you know we Lindsay and I have had this discussion before about apps and about computers and about all kinds of things and you know even the baby had a toy and I went what you got him a computer and Lindsay said that's not a computer it's a baby phone (laughs) and you know it's so true because the colors and the numbers and the songs and that's how they learn but what you said was true don't do other things don't sit them in front of the tv for hours and sit next to them and look and sing along because I know somebody that knows all the words to the baby channel (laughs) but I won't say who it is (laughs) <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Lindsay, thank you for calling. Give that adorable Alex a kiss for Grandma. So nice to meet you. I will. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for calling. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. That's great advice. And I love it because Lindsay is a new mother. And you know what? Mothers so many times, you know, are are so worried about what they're doing with the screen time because it is a fact of life. We have technology. And when you know, they keep changing it. They say no screen time before two, and then you see a great app or you see colors, and that's how they learn, and it's amazing what they do learn because they're little sponges. But, again, not 24-7. Don't stick them in front of TVs or videos. Mm-hmm. But, Lisa, I want to ask you something because I know okay. this is the last part of the show. It's going to go so fast. We have to up. end. When you, when you produce a show, mm-hmm. do you push a button? Do you do 26 things at once? Do you? What is, I wish I could see there was a screenshot what you're doing. That's so funny. My mom last night, she's like, I want to see how you do it. I'm like, well, once you learn how to do it, it doesn't seem like a big deal. But I tell you what, I was a nervous wreck when I first learned how to do it. And I had n- nightmares that I was going to miss counting down to something. Um, basically, what we do, um, producing a show is a lot of buttons. Um, it is clicking a mouse. But um, most of the time, it's listening and watching the clock. So I'm listening to make sure that you sound good, that our um, guest or me um, sounds uh, good. We haven't, they haven't dropped off that if we did get a call that we get them. Um, uh, sometimes I, it's hard to get all the callers because of, um, I've, I've got to push this button and then that button. And so that, and then by the time I go to answer, they're gone. So there's a little bit of nerves in there, but once you get it timed out, right, it becomes pretty natural. Um, and yes, we did have two callers. I'm sorry, other caller, we didn't get to you in time, but, um, uh, like I said, I keep count down. I have to count down backwards on seconds. And once you learn some of those, like 180 seconds is actually three minutes. Um, you know, those little things, you get it and it, it, it makes sense. You, Like I said, if you can dream about it and you understand what you're doing. <laughs> well, you know what? You're a great producer and, and it makes it so smooth when I see what's going on. Also, just a quick shout out. If you were calling and we didn't get to you. Again, we're sorry. Um, (laughs) Go to my website, mybestparentingadvice.com, and go to contact. You can send me your question or whatever you wanted to say. I will put it on my site. Or you can call my office at 480-510-1453. Or you can always call next week. But, again, I'm sorry we didn't get to you. It's technology and radio land and buttons. And, again, please accept our apologies, whoever was calling. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so a lot of buttons, a lot of counting down. Boy, I can't imagine because I know there are a lot of things. And while Lisa is producing my show, I am on something called the Stack, S-T-A-C. Mm-hmm. And 
I am typing. She's typing to me, and she'll tell me, me how many minutes are left, and I will type to her, and I'll say it sounds too loud, or I'll say, what's that noise in the background? Mm-hmm. And then I start <laughs> pushing pushing dials. I'm like, okay, do I have this adjusted? Maybe, oh, is this in her ear, or is that? Uh, oh, wait, that one isn't turned up quite a little bit. Okay, now we're good. Um, so there's little my minute details to, to come into, but like I said, once you know what button does what and what knob does what, you get the hang of it pretty fast. It's good, and you know what, like anything else, once we learn, we can do it, and if there's a mistake, you know what, some people make mistakes, and there's not too many here, well, because my show runs pretty smooth. It does. Well, the best advice for, for a producing radio show I was given by um, well, one of the people here, the guy training me, um, don't think of it as um, if you mess up, don't get too too out of shape. Just go with the flow. Uh, most of the time, people didn't notice, and if they did, it's okay because we're gonna, we can go back and fix it. So if you're, it was basically telling me, if I stay calm, the host will stay calm. They don't need to know all the details um, while you're fixing it, and then afterwards you can adjust. So that that was something that was great because because we got to keep it smooth on our end so that you can do your job easy. No, it's it's true. And you know what? It's it's just great. I love doing my show. And many times my guests will say to me, I'm so nervous. And, and I'll say, it's just like we're on the phone. Pretend you're talking to me on the phone. And for those of you that want to know, I get this question all the time. Am I in a studio? I'm actually in my home office and I have headphones on. And if you go to my Facebook page, Blythe Littman, or you go to My Best Parenting Advice or Baby Instructions on Facebook, you'll see how I sit at my desk with my headphones. So anyway, Lisa, thank you so much for being on the show. I want to end with a couple of things. So I will talk to you next week. You're a great guest. I love all your information. Thank and you so much. Chime in fun. anytime. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what fun. What a fun jam-packed show today. I just love it. Um, next week, my guest will be Katie Hurley. She's the author of this great book. It's called The Happy Kid Handbook, How to Raise Joyful Children in a Stressful World. That is going to be such a great show. I love her book. And by the way, you know, um, I was talking to Lisa during the break, and she was talking about flylady.com to get organized. There's another person called Paula Rizzo, and she was a guest on my show. She wrote a book called Listful Thinking, and she has a website, and I will have her come back again where you can check out the podcast. Not exactly sure when it was. I could post that on Facebook. But if you want to get organized, if you like lists, you know what? That's the way to go. She's got terrific, terrific lists to organize your day. Um, so that was Paula Rizzo. And what else do we have? So next week, how to raise children in a stressful world. If you want to be a guest on the show, contact me at mybestparentingadvice.com. Or you could even be a host. So I want to leave you with a little humor today. When a woman says, what? It's not because she didn't hear you. She's given you a chance to change what you said. That's for the husbands or partners. You know you're a parent when it takes longer to get everyone in the car than to actually run that errand. And finally, remember when you've had a bad day, there are people who would love to have your bad day. So keep your happy on. You know what? Get up in the morning. Choose your attitude. Look at your wonderful little children, your miracles, your older children. Try to enjoy each minute and be fully present because I'll tell you what, they grow up so quickly. Before you know it, they're adults. So enjoy every minute. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. 